I know grandma wasn't okay before she died. Doctors kept talking about how normal it was that she would wake up crying in the middle of the night, that she was having an episode of something, and it would only make me angry. Nobody would believe me, but I can't imagine how bad it must have felt for her, since nobody believed her either. Grandma was active, joyful, and always had a great sense of humor. Even when things went bad, she joked about Grandpa's stinky feet at his funeral, getting a good laugh out of everybody. Grandma was strong. Why was she gone? Seven days before she passed, she called me. She was the only person that ever called me, since everyone, even my parents, only sent text messages. Clara, she said in a whisper, can we talk about something? Sure, what about? I asked. I was genuinely curious about it, since Grandma normally never sounded this serious about anything. She invited me over, saying that she'd make pie and to come to her house. It was around 9 p.m., so I was a little concerned about her. Still, I didn't hesitate to get in my car and take the 20-minute drive to her house. When I got there, the kitchen light was on, and I saw her finger lift up the blinds from the window before the light to the living room turned on, and then the shiny light of the open door came through the front porch. She came walking up to me before I even got out of the car, but she looked fine, maybe a little worried, but happy to see me. She had been alone in that big house for two years since Grandpa passed, but she always seemed to be doing great. But that night, when I started suspecting, no, not suspecting, more like remembering, that something was wrong. We went inside and talked a little. She asked me about my parents and my brother until she interrupted me by asking if I had recurring nightmares. Nightmares? No, I answered. Why do you ask? Well, she said, these past few nights I have started seeing her again, putting an emphasis on her, as if I automatically knew who she was talking about. I tried to fake as if I knew what was going on, but instead I just gave her a confused look until she relaxed her shoulders, looked right into my eyes, and said, Magdalene. The name sounded familiar, but I didn't know what she was talking about. Clara, I couldn't sleep at all last night. She kept whispering to me. When little girls aren't good little girls, I take them with me and rip out their curls. I suddenly started remembering faintly those old nightmares I used to have. I remembered the donuts on the kitchen of the church, the old television playing something on the news with the distinct sound of static in the background. But that was it. Grandma asked if I could stay, but I told her about my presentation the next day at work. It was a Thursday night. I remember now and had to get a good night's sleep. She understood, so we spent about another hour or so in her living room, the pie going cold on the kitchen counter, and she told me about her day, putting behind the topic of Magdalene. I figured it would be for the best, and didn't ask her for more about it, even as those old memories kept arriving, one by one, into my mind. When little girls aren't good little girls... I take them with me and rip out their curls. It was Sunday morning, around 4 a.m., when Grandma called me, screaming, begging for me to come over, as she needed help. I wanted to call the police, but Grandma insisted not to, and asked me to go over instead. I was so worried, I forgot my shoes and my wallet and just ran to the car as a million thoughts ran through my head. When I got there, Grandma was out in the driveway wearing her robe and waving at me nervously. I stopped the car and ran up to her as she cried, telling me not to worry about her too much, but that she had been visited again by this Magdalene person. We went inside and to her bedroom where she told me where she came out from. From the room by her bathroom. How she creeped up toward her, 
stood on her stomach as her own frozen body tried to wake itself up until she was finally able to roll out of her bed and into the living room to call me. She told me that she couldn't breathe and that she was very scared, and I believed her every word. She was still shaking as she told me her story. I called mom and told her about it, but she suggested that we go see a doctor and I knew grandma well enough to say that she was not going to want to go. But to my surprise, she agreed and we set the emergency appointment for that very day. They just gave her aspirin and some type of sleeping pills. I stayed at Grandma's that Sunday and called off from work Monday and Tuesday. But that night, Grandma woke up choking in the middle of the night. I turned on the lights and tried to shake her awake, but her body was stiff as her wide eyes stared at something in the ceiling. I started crying and screaming when suddenly Grandma woke up, gasping for air. What she said next is what gets me the most. Those words, her tone, I think I will have to go soon. I tried to ask her as many questions as I could, but her lack of sleep and the stress was showing through her slurred words. She told me about Magdalene and her claws, the way she creeped up on the walls, the raspy voice telling her to go with her. It's tough to remember that now. The doctor didn't want to come to the house and instead blamed the incident as mental decline. I don't remember how he described it, but I know he was wrong. I called Grandma Thursday morning and eventually showed up at her house. When she didn't open the door, I suspected something had happened. When I used the key she gave me and stepped up to her bedroom, I found her laying still with her arms stretched out away from her. She was gone. It wasn't until a few months after she passed that all of the memories came back to me. The old song with the whispers of the warnings I always heard. When good little girls aren't good little girls, I take them with me and rip out their curls. They came in the distance of my dreams. And that part where you know you're dreaming because the dream itself doesn't seem real enough. Oh, the irony. In the days that followed, I started seeing an ugly creature. Like someone who had been severely burned. With charred skin. Bright yellow teeth. Hunched over. Staring at me from the corner of my bedroom. At first... She would simply look my way, and I couldn't look away or even close my eyes. Then she started creeping toward me, almost afraid of me, as a chance of the old saying rolled in the background like the wind. I couldn't move. The sting of sweat rolling into my eyes wasn't enough to get them to close. I tried to wiggle myself out of an invisible clasp of a giant hand tightening around my entire body. I was finally able to scream something, a name. It came as a surprise with a rush of memories all at the same time as I said it. Maddie. Maddie? She was gone as soon as I said it. I remembered her. She used to play with me until she got old. Or until the man with the cross asked her to stay away from me. I don't remember which happened first. I started writing my dreams when I was a kid. Maybe 11 or 12, but I think it was around the time when I had my first crush on a girl in my class. It was an old notebook, an address book actually, that I took from my mom and used it as a journal because I was too embarrassed to ask my parents for a journal since I always saw them as something that a girl would use. I don't know, they were different times back then. They were all weird. One of them, I was falling from a cliff or something and onto a bouncy castle. You know, one of those inflatable castles that get rented for parties and such. As I was falling faster and faster, 
I remember thinking that I wasn't going to hit the target and instead die on impact. I woke up with a sudden jolt instead. I went straight for my pen and notebook and started writing as much as I could remember before it all went away. Some of the other dreams I remember having were of going through an old house, being asked what my name is and not remembering it, and even having dinner with a different family who was somehow mine. As I grew older, I stopped writing my dreams and instead tried recording them on a cell phone, literally opening up a flip phone, pressing the record button, and whispering into it. Those recordings were funny at first. Things about getting picked last for dodgeball, a dog chasing me down the street, all pretty normal things. Normal up until they weren't. Before long, I was able to decide things in my dreams. They were all simple things, like being able to pick my name, and people in my dream would call me by it. Soon, I was able to climb walls like Spider-Man. And then I decided to make an attempt to fly across the ocean and get to China. I knew I could do it if I didn't run out of speed. But then I instead chose to carry a jetpack. All of this stuff is written down and I still have most of them. I said that things started not being normal, right? This was when I started identifying the characters in my dreams. A guy named Tony and a girl named Christina. People I had never met before, but they would somehow show up. In varying ages and in different roles. Yet I knew their names and who they were. They started telling me things that I knew were horrible. And that I would never, ever do in real life. Things about murder. And theft. And even worse things, too. I didn't know what you call this type of dreaming back then. The kind where you can decide what to do in your own dreams, but it all started getting creepy when I met Jeff. Jeff stayed quiet most of the time, and would usually stare at me from somewhere in the scene of my dream. Like from a treetop, or by being the kid in the back of the classroom. Lurking, almost. During one of my dreams, I walked up to Jeff. Of course, I didn't know his name yet, but he told me who he was and asked who I was. Something was different about him. Something didn't seem right. He walked up to me in a different dream, something I still clearly remember as my last entry for my dream journal. He stared at me for a while before asking me, Hey man, what are you doing in my dream? Your dream? I asked. This is my dream. 